Hi everyone, I'm Dylan and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the ZBrush to Keyshot Bridge and how to get some very nice skin renders inside of Keyshot. Now you probably all recognize this lad, he comes shipped with ZBrush in the projects folder and he might be useful if you want to follow along with this video. I should mention here that for about the first half of this video my mouse pointer wasn't captured by my screen recording software and I hope that isn't too much of an in inconvenience for you. As you can see this lad is made up of a number of sub tools and he weighs in at about 3.15 million polys. Pressing the best preview render button or BPR button sends all the visible subtools over to Keyshot. First we need to set Keyshot as the preferred renderer, otherwise the scene will be rendered inside of ZBrush. To set Keyshot as the renderer, go to render at the top of the screen, then click on external renderer in the drop down and select Keyshot. Before sending anything to Keyshot, let's have a quick look at the Keyshot interface. Now this is Keyshot 5.1 for ZBrush and this is how it opens up. Keyshot has a very large viewport area and over on the right we have the material and the project palettes. The geometry we bring in from ZBrush will land in the project palette and the ZBrush materials will be land down here in the material area. Back in ZBrush and click the BPR button to send everything to Keyshot. And here you can see the progress. Now my screen recording software is causing everything to run about 40% slower than usual which is why this project is taking a little bit of time to come through. Okay here we are and in the project palette you can see the project with all the sub tools and down in the materials tab you can see all the ZBrush materials and our texture or poly painting. While we're checking all this out you can see that the scene is actually rendering live and very quickly in spite of the slow performance because of my screen recording software. The longer the scene is left standing and undisturbed, the cleaner and more noise free the result becomes. While this is great for getting a quick idea of how your geometry will look in a proper renderer, much higher quality renders can be had by clicking on the render button at the bottom and rendering in a separate window. The good news here is that Keyshot for ZBrush allows one to have unlimited resolution renders. People often ask how well does Keyshot do skin? You can judge for yourself now as I attempt to add the Keyshot human skin and combine it with the texture already on the model. I'll pick one of these at random and drag and drop it onto the model. As you can see just dropping it onto the model overwrites the texture so to retain the texture or poly painting I need to hold down ALT while I drag the material onto the model. Now that's more like it. He's looking a little too brown at the moment and that's because the primary colour of the material is dark. I'll be able to fix that now in the next step. The 
the human skin material we dragged from the library into the scene is now in our project palette and I want to rename it so that it'll be easier to find later on. You can see in the properties that the human skin material or now the body material is a translucent material. It has a surface color and a subsurface color. Changing the surface color to white will allow the original texture to show through fully. The red subsurface color will give a fairly convincing subsurface scattering effect. We can also adjust the roughness of the material. I think that big beer belly should look sweaty, so I'm going to reduce the roughness here. Maybe a little bit more, I think. Yeah, I think that looks good. Now remember that even though my screen recording software is slowing everything down, this is still rendering fairly quickly in the viewport. I've been using Keyshot since I was about 15 when I found the educational version and it's always impressed me with its speed of render. Now I'm going to try a different material on his boots. First I'll make everything else invisible so that the boots will render faster for me. I'm going to try a leather material on this. Keyshot has very nice leather material, but also there's a mold tech leather, which is really good. And I think I'll use that instead. I'm holding down Alt as I drag the material so that the texture is retained. For some reason it applied plastic instead of leather to the boots. Uh, that must be a bug. Anyway, I can fix that now. I just need to change the material type back to leather and everything should be good. Also, this time I don't want to keep the texture. I want to just have a nice red leather on these boots. Just to see what it's like. The first colour I'll set to a dark red and the second colour to maybe a black or as close to black as possible. Yes, I think that looks good. I'll just let that cook for a while and then maybe adjust the roughness just to reduce that shine a little bit. Here I'm just playing with the scale of the texture.
Now I'll make all the sub tools visible in the scene again. I want to apply a different material and colour to both his kimono and the trim or edging that goes around the kimono. I will use nylon for both and just change the colour. Now to change the colours on the kimono. No, I don't like that. Maybe green, yeah, maybe a green would look nice. By the way, it's February 14th, so happy Valentine's Day to everybody. I think that will do for now, a red on the edge and I'll bring everything back into the scene. I'll just recompose him now and let him cook for a while in the renderer. I've skipped forward about three and a half minutes to let you see what that amount of time rendering and key shot accomplished. This is on a mid-spec computer as I do CG as a hobby. Many of you out there with faster computers will get renders even faster than this. That's all I have for this time. Thanks very much for watching and goodbye. Gurma, good August,